Good evening. My name is Pedro Gonzala, and I would like to talk to you about the future of transactions. Let me start from the very beginning, barter. Let's say I had an apple and you had a pear, and you wanted my apple and I wanted your pear, and we could both trade and we'd be both much happier. But in another case, you don't want my apple. So bear with me as here it gets very complicated. Let's say you wanted an orange. So I would have to go find someone who's willing to trade my apple for their orange, and I would have to come back to you and trade my newly found orange for your pear. And now we're all happy. But let's add fruit, different values, and then different ripening times, and then we exit the grocery store and it gets immensely complicated. So humans had to find a solution. They found out that using money, um, it worked really well. Uh, whether in a population of five people or eight billion people, it was successful. At first, people used pieces of leather and um, feathers and stones, but they quickly realized that non-scarce objects were not universally valuable. So they started using gold and silver coins and pieces of gold. But when the economy grew, larger transactions could not occur as carrying around large sums of money was not very efficient. So they started using banknotes. They knew that each banknote was, uh, was um, worth a certain amount of gold kept by first kings and then later by central banks. And they trusted the system knowing that these pieces of paper were worth a certain amount of gold. And this worked really, really well for a really, really long time, up until the 1970s, when this man, among others, decided that they needed more money in circulation than gold they had. So they decided to decouple the dollar from gold, meaning that the value of the dollar was not any more determined by gold rather than by supply and demand. And other elements, <coughs> other elements such as inflation, um, interest rates, capital flow, and money supply. And this brings us to the situation in which we are here today. In the past few years, like always, currency and the world of currency has been changing and growing. But crypto has entered the image. Crypto is a type of currency backed by blockchain technology. Each block contains a set amount of information about the transactions that occurred in the period in which that block was programmed. When the block is full, a new block is attached to the chain. This allows for transparency and the elimination of the third party in transactions. And um, the, the, the elements that determine the value of crypto are two. First of all, the interest in people in acquiring it. And second is the um, limited amount of a cryptocurrency of which there is. For instance, Bitcoin is limited at 21 million units. And crypto users think they're very cool for multiple reasons. First of all is transaction speed. While traditional transactions take up around maybe 24 hours, crypto transactions just take up a few seconds. Second is the decentralization of crypto, meaning that there is no bank or government backing that currency avoiding any geopolitical influence on the value of that currency. Now, is that completely true as when Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla would not be accepting crypto as a form of Bitcoin as a form of payment anymore, the value of crypto dropped. And he's not even a government official. And finally, and finally privacy. Um, all transactions happen completely anonymously. When it comes to the perks of crypto, privacy is a major topic of discussion. As users use a numeric pseudonym, meaning that Everybody can see that user one traded with user two, but nobody knows who's behind that user. And this makes it extremely hard for tax enforcement and governments to verify transactions. And it also makes it extremely popular on the dark web when it comes to buying contraband and illegal substances. Also, this numeric pseudonym is not 100% foolproof, as some very sophisticated hackers may find out who is behind that number. And when they do, they know all the transactions you've ever done, as they're all public on the database. Another risk crypto users face when trading with crypto is the 51% attack. When a trader or user has more than 51% of the coins in circulation for that currency, they can control the rates at which that currency is released and traded, making the other 49% a debatably dull and useless asset. This can never occur with a mm, traditional currency like dollars, euros, and pounds. When it comes to trading with normal money, with traditional money, trust is extremely mature. Economic players have a very clear method of determining whether transactions they're about to complete is safe. For crypto users, this is more of a challenge, as they struggle trusting the currency itself and other users. Due to the rich history crypto has with hacks, scams, and robberies, it is difficult for them to trust each other. And the high volatility of crypto makes it a tough place to place your assets in the long term. Now, this all regards the individual uh, aspect of crypto. But how did banks and governments play their, role in, play their role in the crypto rush? Two prime examples, among others, are 
JP Morgan and the Central Bank of China. JP Morgan launched the JPM coin, um, which even risked a rush on the banks, which they had to remove from the markets, and is currently only usable um, inside the bank to move its money, to move money around. Its value is determined by the value of JP Morgan. On the other hand, the yuan-backed coin, which is value was determined by the value of the yuan, um, was um, launched by the Central Bank of China. And it never grew to scale and only stayed successful on a local level. Now, I believe crypto is still very abstract. And that you cannot buy or sell things with crypto without finding somebody who's interested in acquiring your crypto. This kind of reminds me of the fruit which I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. I mean, realistically, what can you buy or sell with crypto? Weapons, organs, and uh, dogs on the dark web doesn't really sound like an improvement to the current system. So when we will be able to buy goods and services um, without going back to a traditional currency using crypto, then it will become a successful form of trade. But at that point, it will have to have a very mature trust, meaning that it gets exposed to all the side effects and um, maybe uh, bad parts of traditional currencies, such as inflation such as inflation. Um, and this all makes uh, crypto great and terrible. So to me, it seems that the perks of crypto are also its disadvantages. So please, mind your wallets, but also mind your digital wallets. Thank you.